Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order Thursday, April 25th, 2024. It's 5.06. And first thing on the agenda was approve the re review and approve the minutes from March 7th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from March 7th. And I will second it. All in favor? Um, your next financial statement. Yeah, please. Okay. Um, I don't think I presented warrants at the last meeting, so I wanted to get that on here today, even though this was just a special budget meeting. So 23 warrants were signed electronically, totaling $58,023.64. That was for anything signed, um, which I think was from January through this meeting. Uh, I gave you the year-to-date expense reports. There's no new concerns. There are some overages, but if you look at the bottom line of the budget, we still have about 5% to spend, which is a little over 100,000. Um, and we'll spend that down in various ways. Not everything is encumbered yet. So a lot of that's already accounted for. It's just not in the report yet. Um, and I think that's it. For well, mostly all the salaries are encumbered. Oh, the salaries. The only are thing encumbered. we're worried about is like yep. electricity and yeah, fuels. Yeah, like and stuff some like. of the utilities aren't fully encumbered yet. You know, office supplies, that kind of thing. Um, PD right now, teachers are putting in for second round of PD if they're eligible for that. So, you know, the substitute lines, those kind of things. But anything salaries wise is fully encumbered. I think that there's still some money in the technology lines to be spent. That's a good chunk. That's probably like twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars of the hundred that's left. So, yeah, and we usually wait to this time to assess what our tech needs will be for next yep. year. So, exactly. Like for new Chromebooks or mm -hmm. something like yep. that. Okay. Any questions about? It? No. No. Uh, public comment tonight. No, just your support will all be informed. <laughs> I really do appreciate everyone's thoughtfulness and hard work. Thank you. And I'm just interested. <laughs> so you're all our public. Like, yeah, you you are the public. <laughs> we like it when public comes. <laughs> um, I guess we're going to go right into FY25 budget. Okay. Talking, voting, all of the above. All right, so this is a. I didn't present the music. Oh, you're doing it? Oh, you're doing it. I was doing it. Oh, yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> That's what we've been doing. If you would like you know, to, you can. I don't know why I'm so off. But <laughs> I am just off, right? So, yes. Okay. But it is behind me, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's not like vacation like, photos or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so another presentation of budget, bringing it back. I uh, wanted to give you a recap of where we were at the public hearing. So this is what we talked about at the March 7th meeting. Uh, we were looking at a budget of 5.57% increase over FY24. You can see level services, which is wages and non-wages. That was a big driver with the transportation increase there compared to prior months. And then the new request did include uh, the one new IA for the one-to-one -one that we know we're going to have new next year per an IEP. And then the 0.5 uh, full-time equivalent math interventionist position and then a couple of other increases. We also were using $40,000 of ESSER and $42,000 of rural aid to bring that number down. So if you take that into perspective, uh, $80,000 is what, about 4%. So we were at nearly 10% without those supplemental funds. And the reason I wanna bring that up is because we're already looking ahead to next year. So that means we're gonna start next year with a potential deficit of $82,000 as we build the budget. And that's important as we go through the consideration process, particularly with this math interventionist position, which was the big topic of discussion at the last meeting. Um, so where we are today, I pulled the math interventionist out so you could see what that number looks like if we did not have that position in here. We're still gonna continue to talk about that request and need at the school, but I wanted you to see what the budget would look like without that. Uh, so we would be at 3.79, which again, that is using the 82,000 in supplemental funds. So really another 4% on top of that. So our true budget is about 8% increase. Um, and it the new request comes down significantly because that 0.5 position is about $35,000. 
in both of these drafts that you put up here, the, the increase in transportation is in there somewhere? Yep. Okay. It's in the $51,000 number under level services. Got it. Got it. Um, so continuing the conversation. So like I said, the math interventionist is the big point of conversation. There was a lot of talk at the last meeting, not only about whether or not we can afford it, but whether or not um, it is in need of the school. And I you know, will defer to Christy to give her um, opinion on that again. Um, my understanding is that you know we're holding firm that there is a need for this, um, but just wanted to give you some recap details here. So it is a half-time position. Salary is just shy of 35,000 based on what we have budgeted. Um, it would provide greater support for students and teachers. There's still the question of is it long-term or short-term need? We talked about it being a one-year position to try to support um, outrolling the new curriculum. So support for teachers and then direct support for students as well. And then of course our challenge is funding. So we do have additional ESSER funds available that are not um, earmarked yet. However, they are one-time funds. And to date, we have avoided using one-time funds to support budget. Um, we've used ESSER for a lot of other important things. Keep in mind, we're already using 40,000. So if we use another 35,000 of ESSER, we're gonna be 70,000 in a deficit plus the rural aid because we don't know what the rural aid looks like yet. So or never less, right? The rural aid never yeah. less. I know we don't no. know that. Can we be heard out of Beacon Hill yet? Like what the, the house the house budget, I'm only getting the house and certain stuff came out and it was at half of that. It was a seven yeah. million five hundred. Governor level funded in her recommendation and the house cut it in half. And so we could be looking at it. I think I don't know. I'm trying to play the politics, but I think they're playing games with it, and it's going to be just level funded. So, you know, I mean, if it's good at the at the best, it's going to be level funded. When is when is that voted on? <laughs> do we know? Do we know when the or is it just sort of up it's in the air? June. So yeah, yeah, I mean, we so won't it's know. At the end of the right season, but okay. the awesome. But the uh, the other issue on that is that um, they're pushing for the per child per pupil reimbursement to be at $103 or something like that instead of whatever. But we've been so much more with, with really? rural aid. So, you know, so instead of getting, so we, we think our number here is going to be, we get it. For what? Rural double, aid? Yeah, double, no, the price per pupil. Oh, um, it was in the governor's budget at 30. The house put it in at the 103 which only gives the town of Waitley like an extra $4,000 or $5,000. It's a minimal it's just, amount it's of money. Even, it's, it's like, if you, if like, so they're politically right now, the trade, they're more emphasis on price, you know, fell over pupil rather than the rural aid, which we get absolutely sunk with. But the reason they're doing that is because there are more states, yeah. I mean, more districts statewide in a hold harmless than there are rural schools absolutely. receiving rural aid money. So. Absolutely, the yeah. more people will win with that, and right. more people use more votes. Right. Yeah. So um, the other two options uh, with funding are to put it on the general fund, which puts us back to the five point five seven percent, which is fine if we feel like the town will support that. Um, and then I don't want to forget, which I've already touched on a little bit, the twenty six impact and beyond. You know, it's it's a really significant deficit. Even just the ESSER funds, say we get the forty two thousand in rural aid again, seventy thousand dollars to make up in one budget year is a lot of money. So do we go into it as a one year position? Can we even pose it that way in the posting and find somebody to fill that role? Um, or if that is a need, other cuts would have to be considered to keep that moving forward because we don't have the surplus uh, revolving funds, which and, I and touch the, on. And the half, the half um, you're talking about one-year position with no benefits. Correct? No, it would be a benefit-eligible position. Oh, okay. The town would have to I thought we up. were talking about... Even though it's part-time. Yeah, because part-time, to be eligible for benefits, you have to work 20 hours or more a week. So yeah. they'd be eligible. Okay. So well, we really just need someone 19 now. <laughs> <laughs> Someone that's still on mom and dad's insurance. <laughs> yeah. Until what? 26 now or whatever yeah, it is? Yeah, right. 25 year old. <laughs> yes. No losses there, don't worry. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. so so I have a typo. If, 
we do bring in this person, um, what in your mind does that look like? You know, for how many grades is this person servicing? Like, how many students do you have? Like, an idea of how many students need to be serviced by this person? Right now, and some of it has to do with when we look at MCAS scores. Yeah, I guess don't take the MCAS, right. but there was a there's a remarkable difference pre COVID and post COVID in what our upper grade students are able to do. Right. And it kind of makes sense. Um, we focus our reading specialist in the lower grades for obvious reasons, and I think we would probably focus the math interventionist on the upper grades. So you're looking at like four, five, six, yes. and getting them up to a grade level. And filling those those gaps. And if for some reason that didn't pass or we don't find that person, what's the plan to fill in those gaps without an extra person? Mm -hmm. Doing the best that we can um, to differentiate instruction and like I said, when it comes to math, it's about filling holes, things that got missed somewhere along along the line. Um, you know, we have instructional assistants who pitch in and work with small groups, but ideally it would be someone who could collaborate with the classroom teacher with flexible grouping. So looking at who needs what now. So this is the concept the class is working on. What are the prerequisite skills and who needs those? And then so it wouldn't be like these are the three kids who get math intervention on your mark. Right, right. So it's really looking closely at who needs what to participate fully in what's going on in the classroom. Um, that being said, we're also getting new math curriculum. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> so that's a that's a, a piece in there too. What do you think about the new math curriculum that's coming out? I mean, do you know any? You must know something about it. It's awesome. I don't oh. think, am I too late? <laughs> <laughs> it's so. You have. Go ahead. We have a, a couple of teachers in the building who have used it, started using it this year, and Mrs. Tibbetts is one of those. And rarely do we take on a new curriculum that so many people agree is really fantastic, and Bridges seems to be one that sort of overall people really think is, is effective and uh, not easy to use, but manageable to implement um, some of the the programs that are available are so cumbersome, and this one seems to be a little more user friendly, both on the teacher side and the student side. So, um, kids are really engaged. They're feeling very excited about that. Our, one of our issues has been that there was a lot of choice in what each grade level could use. It's just, you know, there's some value in, in saying to a teacher, here are three math programs that we have vetted and we feel are effective think about the kids in front of you and use what you think is best but then everyone's kind of doing their own thing and, and math each program has its own sort of language and its structure and if every grade is using it then the kids get to know what the language and the structure is and it's, like it's not new learning every year in terms of how the program works so i'm, I'm looking forward to a time when everyone's using the same program um and i do have to say that this came to me from someone who's been here longer than I have been, that prior to my being here, a math interventionist was approved half time. We're thinking maybe 2016. Well, that person always used to be in the school. This was different. I think you're talking about Mrs. H. Yeah. Um, we but were after her, there was right. We were set to split a math interventionist with CGS. Um, and I, I, no one really kind of knows what happened. <laughs> but the other thing to keep in mind is most schools, and most schools are not as small, but most schools have a reading specialist and a math specialist on staff full time. Yeah. Um, and so there's a piece of me that feels like I don't want kids to miss out on opportunities for support because they came to our school versus the next one. So, Darius, is there anyone at? One of the other elementary schools that could come here part time and also so we're they not be reducing their hours there. there. So they're all full time at the other three schools. Oh, they are. Or we share with another district. You know, some right, doesn't right. just work at one; they work elsewhere. So. <clears throat> yeah. So I think generally we feel like 
we support the need collectively as a group. I haven't heard anyone say that we don't support the need um, and the desire. So then it comes down to how do we fund it? Um, we talked a little bit about future budget concerns. A um, couple other things to point out is that unit A and unit C will have contract negotiations next year. So we'll be looking at increases in wages. Um, we talk about this every budget cycle and we're experiencing it right now. It is hard to fill new needs um, with such a small budget because your percentage points are, are they're minor. You know, 1% is $22,000. So uh, that's, that's tough to swallow. Um, and then revolving funds, our projections right now, we talked about this early on in the budget cycle, but school choice balance, I'm projecting to be slightly under 100,000 at the end of next year. That's um, less than one year in reserve. And if we did have some type of emergency, whether it's building wide or um, facilities wise or out of district placement, that would get eaten through really quickly. Um, and then early childhood, uh, we didn't talk a ton about this year because the program seems to be healthy as far as enrollment goes, but we have had increased needs in the uh, special ed population and early childhood, which decreases our tuition because we're providing services at no cost. Um, so, you know, it's just thing to be mindful of that we don't have other pockets of money to dip into as we're making budget decisions. The one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, I know it's only a small part, but the one-on-one -on -one aid for next year, are we looking at five years in the future for that? Or a, can you say how many years? I mean, there's a multiple years coming up for that person one on one. It's multiple years. Okay, been the budget for a while, so it'll be, it'll be on our budget for a while. Okay, and so that's the other kind of thing. that's one thing to consider that we're looking at increasing staffing by a position. I mean, it's IAs are not the full price of the teacher, but it's basically, which is very difficult to do in school. This size, right? I mean, adding a position is huge. It's Three percentage point minimum, um, and so that's you know so that's kind of where we're. And so I just want to make sure people understand that if if we save extra money, what basically we're doing is we're swapping out costs with school choice and increasing school choice so that we have school choice funds for next year. Just want to make sure everybody has that kind of that's how we're moving money around, like because the extra money has to be spent by September. So if you leave here and someone says. Well, they have to spend it by September. Like, well, how are they? How are they doing that? Basically, we're just trading expense lines, um, and then try to have more of a savings to go into next year. And next year, I mean, I think we elementary. If, if we can project what collective bargaining is going to be, what's going to be like a reasonable kind of, you know, you know, it's going to be this year or more, right? And this year is probably you know being at two percent. You know, given the current market, it's going to be that or more. Um, it's going to be a year next year. We are going to have to go to the town, most likely, unless there's an outside influx of funds that is not on the radar now. We will be at probably, without reductions of staffing, at six. At least, yeah. At least. So next year is going to be a tough year no matter what. And so the conversation, um, one, we want to make sure we're having that conversation early on with the town so they know that, like, we see it coming. It's not like a mismanagement. It's just the cost. You can't. You have to have adjustments um, at school size. And we really had one you know, about six years ago, my first year, I think. Um, but that's just kind of the reality. So, um, so, so, if we, so, so if we so if we do the 5.57, we'll be saving on ESSER to use it on something else that we may we may need down the road. But we have to spend it by September. Well, we would basically be saving it. So, like Darius said, we would move expenses around. Okay. We'd to get that it. into school choice, and we'd have that additional thirty thousand dollars or thirty-five thousand dollars to help offset next year's budget. Okay. So it's a little bit like six and one half dozen in another. Do we reduce the budget now and use the ESSER and have a lower increase request to the town, and then? Um, Next year, the increase is larger, or do we go at the 5.57, save some money, and help bring the increase down next year? I still think, regardless, I don't imagine we're going to be under 4% next year, even with supplemental funds. We're looking at a few oh, hard budget cycles. 
Is everybody in the same boat as us? Okay, that's that's what I thought. Just yeah, I, my thought is that you know if we go to the town this year with three point seven, and then we go next year with seven, you know what you're saying it could be seven. I think that's a huge increase. There's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of um, you know unhappy people. So my thought is we go in with the five point five. You know, we've already just had the map interventionist discussion with some of them and see what they say. And if they approve it, great. And then next year's jump doesn't look so huge, you know, um, and maybe that person we only need for one year. Who knows? But then if we go in without the map interventionist, then we're looking at paying for it ourselves because we all agree that we need it, right? Yeah. yeah. We, so I think we should save that extra money, ask the town for the increase and see what they say. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I also just, maybe it's, a, it's an emotional position, but I've never liked the feeling of betting against students this year in the name of helping them next year. Sure. I feel like they're in the school this year. They deserve everything that we can yeah. give them this year. Right. And that way we're not prioritizing a class down the road. It's, yeah. I need it now. Right, and those fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, like you're saying, they need that math help now. We don't want to leave it to Frontier when they get there, you know, and they're already behind starting at a new school. So um, I think it's an important person to have here, at least for the year, and we can see what they say. So what happens if this person works out really well and we want to keep, her, keep her, that person for another year or two or three or four, are we going to be able to afford roughly $34,500 next year, or are we going to use some other monies? Well, for... so, um, right. And so I'm I mean, trying to look at, yeah. right. And so fair question. And I think the, you'd have, so there's one, either you have to increase revenue somehow, which is either taxes to I mean from the tax base or, you know, from the town, so to speak. Um, any other outside money? So if we get an increase in rural aid, that might be able to help offset that. Um, or you have to reduce other staffing to prioritize this stuff. Not to get off that subject, it, you know, looking at money, what, what does school choice look like for next year for for numbers? Are, are we are we getting so the replacement of our sixth graders? Are with, we're losing seven sixth graders. And we have 13 new school choice students who are starting. That's great. Yeah, yeah that's see there's possibly one there, more. We're still waiting here for one more. So that's yep. money that if we yeah. had to use it for the math person again, possibly as a until until we find out, do we need this person all the time? This person's the best person possible and it's helping our school, then we're gonna have to figure out getting it on the budget permanently in the future. But if it's a one year thing and it's worked out well and Bridges takes over and, and we don't need the person, but if we need it, and we're going to have to figure out a way next year to put it on our budget. I think, you know, it, you know, we said it best with Bill Smith and we have to be down yep. here um, in the sense of like, you are going to say what the needs are. If the, the community doesn't want us, you know, he always says, put up the flagpole and salute it. If this community doesn't want to salute it, they can reject the budget right. that's your call and re remember you you want to be in agreement with the finance community you don't have to be in agreement with finance. i don't know they didn't officially i don't know they didn't give me official word if they voted up or down that early proposed number but you can be in disagreement you just have to be if you do just because you have to be prepared to talk about it on how many for i believe but we will be there as well yeah. they tabled it till the next meeting well and they, she also asked you know the uh, uh Lynn asked to press to send the numbers over after this meeting. Oh, okay. So they know we're making a decision. Yeah. And to be fair, because we play this game in other ones as well, like it's your decision to make. We, you really don't want to divert it to them. You just kind of want to give let them to kind of shout at us and say, give us their ideas. But it's your call on like, hey, we're coming in above five this year. This is why we think the reason why we have no problem explaining that to the general public. That if you're comfortable with that statement, then go with the go with the higher number. And you know what I mean? You get in front of the town meeting, so this is why we think we need it. And people will say, yay, or, and the other part of what we don't know is how much money the town has. Okay. So, right, so their assessment for Frontier went up, which means they have more money. Okay, and so, but 
I don't know exactly what that looks like. I don't, you know, I don't see what their chapter 90 funds and their other funds, and I don't know the other projects and how that works in. But usually when Frontier, when all of a sudden you have, they have an 11% on Frontier for their assessment this year, right? It was 10. Yes, yeah, 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 a little over 10. Um, and which means, why does your assessment go up? Because your income has gone up. That's how it's, in some way or another, your yeah. assessment of your town. So we got a couple just, millionaires come into town. <laughs> they, it can, but we don't know exactly. Yeah, know. It's dangerous to, yeah. for me to say yeah. it like that, but right. it does. But just to show that we, they might be able to say, "Hey, we can afford five percent this year." And next year, they could may have a building or new whatever they could other. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know those things. And that's where the communication happens with the town. But I do. The reason why they do, and again, this is again, I'm probably helping sell this to you, but the reason why they do keep schools separate from whatever is this exact thing. If you have People pushing, pencil pushing finance all the time when dealing with education, then you're not making education decisions, you're making finance decisions. And that's why they created School Community Act as it is. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of reminding folks that's why it is a separate body, that why it is, you know, um, just what happens to our school remain controls. 70% yeah, budget. Going into the 5.5. Absolutely. Same. I think Absolutely. we can justify why. That number is what it is. Um, so I'm bringing this back up for yeah. you because uh, yeah. we will need a motion. I'll make that uh, motion. Uh, and this is the amount and uh, the percentage. So motion to is it to submit to approve the general fund budget at two five point five seven percent. All right, motion to approve the general fund budget at five point five seven percent over FY twenty four. Over FY twenty four. Second, you can. Type the number in there in the minutes to proceed in that motion, the $2,054,814. Okay, you want the percentage and the number. Yeah. You know, if either one. Yeah. Should I, one, should I, should I retry that one more yeah. time? No, you're, okay, I right. think we're good. Yeah. We got it all. Right. I just really like watching person type really quick. That it's just, <laughs> that's all I'll look at the minutes too and make sure that the motion's in there, right? Better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make awesome. me look good. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I second the motion. All in favor? So moved. So I will send this over to the town tomorrow so they know. Great, what we're judged for. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate all the dialogue around everything. It's a good conversation. It's a big ass, the big leap, but if it's already big going into next year, it's not like having to relive this. Two percent more doesn't seem as big as. Right. <laughs> And then, yeah, but all the we're talking, compared to where, where, as you were just talking about Northampton, but compared, um, I can get the list of it was going around the, the list there, so to speak, of what all the increases are across the state. It's not crazy. Five yeah. in the five areas, not crazy. In fact, yeah. the fact that overall our districts have been lower than that pretty consistently, um, you know, kind of shows like, yeah. you know, just like, okay, so our neighboring towns are all over. I believe you guys talk all the time. All the superintendents talk all the time. So I'll take that. Sure. Correct. I'm not sure if you have Oh, enough. Are, and the ones that aren't that high, they're making dramatic cuts to and get low. low. Cut a bunch. I think East Long Meadow also had to cut a bunch. Um, they got brought out with that school community. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And part of the challenge is, is that these larger districts that got you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or a million dollars on ESSER money, they added positions and now they can no longer afford it. That ESSER is not available. So that's part of the reason why they're having to make cuts. So we were really fortunate not to have to do that and up until this point and use ESSER on other things. So yeah, you know, we're still debating about adding on as opposed to having to reduce, which is a privilege I really, to be in. I really think the state, the federal government, I, I know a lot of people that have COVID that, that are still sick and can't hold a job. Yeah. Long COVID is real. Yeah. I mean, that's why the state, the federal government should be still helping towns like like any any town that has has problems because it's it, you have to bring in special people to help help the kids. And I, I know, you know, I know the state knows that somewhat. Are they willing to give up money or get more money from the federal government? You know, this is the uh, this is where it wow. was about, a, line, about yeah. a month ago. All right, bunch the bottom of our spot. Try to kind of scroll down. Pause, but you can kind of get yeah. Look at that. 
Yeah. He's here for elementary school, 1.44. Yes. Well, how did they swing that? <laughs> they must have had some <laughs> cut out great. Did the town, town, town have a lot of money? So Deerfield made some decisions last year with their budget that set them up this year. They reduced, reduced two the teaching um, positions oh. last year. Um, What's the word on the street about how this, like how this <laughs> functioning? Well, right. they had yeah. two sections per grade level, so they could well, they consolidate. Used three, three. They used that three, right? right? Now they're going down to two. And just the class oh, right. Size. Yeah. What's, what, what are the class sizes? There's, you still, know? there's still like 18. Oh, that's 18 to 20. Oh, okay. So, so each grade only has two there now? Yeah. Oh, wow. And they redid, which it started, you know, a few years back when they made a decision to School choice was being inflated the fact that so they have a full class of school choice. Um, so they started reducing that. And, yeah. I mean, it's going to have a ripple effect across here. If they, the proposed oh, yeah. tax cuts for, uh, or the cuts for our Northampton go through, the average class size is looking to be about 35 to 37 kids. Wow. Um, Where? For freshmen. Yeah. Where's that? In Northampton High. Oh. If, the, if the mayor's proposal goes through. What's Pelham? You just went past Pelham. Pelham. So where are you on a superintendent? What's that? We have a superintendent. A principal is leaving. 9.5 uh, Petersham? Uh, that's the Travis. Yeah. 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 No, that's a Travis. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a Travis. Yeah. We did uh, Marhart. Almost five yeah. percent. Really? Yeah. Plus students this year. I mean, how many times? Three point two seven at Sunderland. Before you decide. Sometimes I have kids who don't take a morning to the They cut a Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, West Springfield, we have well, one, grade, one, one, class, one teacher, one grade here. I mean, we can't, the only thing we could cut if we had to cut something would be. So these are all. These don't don't. These aren't like uh, these were in motion in in the works. Yeah. So a lot of them, I'm sure, came down somewhat. And here's one not good. Well, so the first one I do when I filled that I in I think was before Every time I see the, bus the transportation. Look at yeah. yeah. West Springfield. Yeah. Service. Right, yeah, like a yeah, right. uh, jump cart on. Yeah, they're So North Hampton was trying to show that what he's seeing is they can collapse some of the elementary schools together as yeah. a way to save on costs. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, it's not a full I mean, I, oh, I, I know, but I appreciate that because it makes our ass look very reasonable. And I mean, that's we talk about having to like pitch it to the town. Yeah, we're we're nowhere near the town. Right. Are we done? No, I was, I was like, oh, we're acting like we're done, but we we're not done. Are we, still, um, oh, are we still on? Yeah. Yeah. No, I we were no, are, we all are we all done with this now so we can go on to composting? Yeah. yeah. Do you have that information? Um, I thought that they were going to be here. Oh, did you ask her to come? Uh, yes. Okay. What? I can say that the last... And maybe you had a different one because she's been emailing you as well. But the last numbers I have uh, is $1,430 for the year to compost. And that's going to transport? Yeah. Is that, is that what you? I can't find it, but that sounds right. But they don't, did they, did they put the bins here? Did they put the bins here and everything? Or, uh, or do we have to see. buy bins? How much does a bin hold? Because it's all that stuff that's just going into the regular garbage, correct? Right. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't bring this email up in advance. Um, it's for hauling, is what she's saying. But you, do we have a bin that we were using in the past year for composting? No. Not that I'm aware of. Same use of the dumpster. There's a quote of 125 flat fee for hauling and the use of a dumpster. All right, so they give us a dumpster and yeah. then we just. So they just come and smell great wherever that is. We'll be attracting wildlife. <laughs> Make sure we have you a lock. Science is interesting. We have though. a lock on the track. Yeah, yeah the bears will be going right into it and stuff. So you said that was a projected cost of 1400 That's what I have. Uh, the lowest possible price, 1430 the highest, 1980 What do you think, so, Chris? If you want to say 2000 is a... Okay, yeah, right. If you, want to, you don't want to be under, but that's good. But that was for... 
That's for the school year. Okay, yeah. All right. What do you think, Jeff? Oh, you know, it's well, I mean, it's something we should be doing. But okay, and the other schools. I also have to think about, like, the, in the context of the larger conversation, we don't have a whole lot of surplus cash laying around. So. So I'm going to throw something at it, and everybody, everybody goes to the transfer station. There's a big compost thing there. Yeah. And 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 I think I asked about it again. Is there any way that Dan, if there's a barrel a day or a barrel every other day or every three days that's not too heavy, can Dan, if we give him gas money, bring it over to that compost and bring at the transfer station, which is just a mile down the road? I don't think I can volunteer his vehicle. I okay. think I think you're. I, I mean, I think for what you're asking, like, yeah, it makes sense. But when you're running a a facility like this, Dan's out sick this week, yeah. and I also get double compost. You know what I mean? And then it's also compost. It's a little different than with. I don't know what this transfer station's like, but I mean, milk cartons are compost. So it's like it's a it's not it's not your not food it's not it's not your All leaves foods. and branches and that kind of stuff it is like this stuff has to be kind of okay. put in the facility that's taking that kind of compost. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, and it's I, all paper product and anything is anything is the scale great. is probably bigger than a, a truck. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I imagine you guys produce a lot of food waste, not intentionally. The majority of your cafeteria waste not will be compost. <laughs> I can't see what's the there any waste on spaghetti. <laughs> Get him in the kitchen. <laughs> the they box. Like the um, <laughs> do the other schools have this? That's my impression. And they budget for it. They they, just got it in. they got it in a year. They weren't having this discussion we had five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Any other year we'd be like, yeah, okay, let's do compost. <laughs> so So run your budget for trash over. And then next year we talk about adding it into the budget. We're already asking for a thirty percent increase next year, right? And then we just said, "What's so <laughs> another? That's another two K in the Yeah, I mean, one twenty-five to one fifty a month. I recycle. I don't compost. I don't have a compost bin on my own property. Really? So I would. <laughs> Can I we... recycle? I love recycling. What do you do with your coffee grounds? I should be putting them in my garden. Eat them. I know. I should be. You know, I'm like, saving all my eggshells, though. I, don't compost either. I am selling my eggshells. You're street. I compost. I compost like crazy. I do too. I just got to hold down Westbrook here. <laughs> what do you do with all your compost? Can Put you it in the garden? Take ours and like, compost it. My, my, my mighty Prius. Or or like, oh, the best thing. And I just dump it in there. Trash. Right. Trash. 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 If you buy me the trailer for my Prius, I would love you to have that thing out. Pull it. Pull it. Yeah, we'd have to use dust tape. Throw everything out there. Sorry. Decomposes and sometimes the chickens get into it. I'm in favor of doing this. I think it's a good lesson for kids to learn. I think it's a good uh, habit to get into, as we can see as adults, not all of us into it. So. You do tell me that. Oh, yeah. we'll so let's that. let's yeah. let's keep out the lies of omission. Yeah. Because when they used to, like, there was a lot of training that went into teaching them how to use pictures next to where they. We have a very fancy like. Do you have to triple the tripod like, system? Nice. Yeah, and so we used to do that, but we we didn't at some point say just throw it all in the same thing after all kids continued using right. that. So. We don't we don't lie to them and say we're composting. But we never told them that we're not. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's kind of like what do you know that what's there, our trash service at Frontiers that way now too, where they mix both. Well, they mix the recycling together. Where you used to keep all the cardboard yeah, and what do you call it? It's called single something. stream. Single stream, right? Yeah, they, 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 we do that they, at the restaurant too. It's all together. It's all together now. Like, oh, you, and, and, and people have been keeping it separate every year. The truck yeah. comes, they just throw it all in the same thing, and you're like. I spent like an hour separating, <laughs> but then they separate because yeah, it's cheaper than having two trucks. Yeah, better for the environment, too. Anyway. So, so we got to put a we'll put a cap. We'll put. A, I mean, it's really weird that they're talking from thirteen hundred to nineteen hundred. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you I, basically. Well, so I wouldn't worry about the number. I would just yeah. say we move to. We're, I would make the motion that Should we, put are, a cap we will be a composting school, and we have, in the administration, the administration figures out how to do it. Yeah. And obviously, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try to get that price out. Don't put a cap on it. Right. Come back to it and say, listen, it's two thousand two dollars yeah. this year. Like it's just all right. So motion to include 
composting and have administration deal deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very very to make a motion. Very professional motion. <laughs> motion to to what to include uh, composting in, in part the, as part yeah. of our waste management budget for next year. It'll stay down on a save on a regular trash, but the problem yeah. is it it does reduce your amount of trash you make, but your the trucks are they're still coming. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know if they could come every other week. Right. Yeah, we'll I mean, we'll see. Chrissy, can you stay on top of that for us? Yeah. You go out there and weave the trash. Yeah, keep yeah. We set up a giant scale and have children okay, come and stand on one side, and that's how we're. Oh, Jesus. Huh. Okay, so oh, I seconded the motion. Yes, and seconded. All in favor? I move we Thank you. go to eat the compost. Well, Lola, Lola, Lola can bring her goats. When I was at um, Sunnyside Daycare, we have a big poison ivy infestation there, oh, and yeah. so we were trying to find goats, goats to come in. And oh yeah, I mean, there was a there was a group called the Goat Girls. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they still are. They still, still around. Yeah. Goat woman. Yeah, as a chef, she comes yeah. and puts up a temporary uh, electric fence. Never, never pulled it. Uh, you know, never got it to happen, but it was a really fantastic. <laughs> and they go in there and they just. Everything. 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 It's I better than stomach. using Roundup and all that other crap. Um, well, goats eat not weed. Goats eat think eat anything. Right. Everything is using goats on the side of the road now. I mean, now we're just going to uh, bittersweet and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, oh. We're we're over we're over in, in I see in Massachusetts as a an outdoors person. There's so many invasive species out there for vines. I go in the woods, some of the vines are like that big, and what they do is they go in the trees. You know what they do? They strangle the tree to death. The big issue. And I, I cut a lot of stuff that grow up my trees. I just cut it so the tree still lives. Right. I'm going to retire. I'm going to buy a herd of goats <laughs> and I'm gonna sell my goat services there to, you go. to clean up not weed alongside of Wow. I, I just, oh, I should have said that online. You can't steal that. That's trademark. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see that we got something from. We have nothing but new business. Can we can we bring up anything that we talked about with the denser or the uh, the yeah, you, can't, the you can't you can't vote on it. Okay. So, um, so did you hear? I I would love to have it talked about. Oh yeah. Right. At the finance I, committee, they discussed our duct system and that it is due for cleaning. I don't know anything about it, but has it been cleaned? Supposedly, it's never. Supposedly yeah. it's never been clean. Okay. Cass, why, why, who knows that? Who's tracking duct particle density? Well, we, right. Um, like, so it, this came about when um, some folks from the town. Finance came, committee. And they toured with Bill Hildreth and um, Dan. And so that's where it came out. I, okay. I did not know it was something I. And there's someone on the committee that is a builder and understands mechanical systems sure. in buildings and houses. But, so as part of this tour, they were just like crawling in through the vents. Well, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Probably asked how long it's been since the same thing. Right. So, and, so which I get. Right? So it's on our head to probably do if they're. It's on our. It's on our. It was on our capital plan. It was not a one or two. It was further down. To us, it was a priority to get the temperature in this building lower for high quality. What is the cost of cleaning? Thirty-four thousand dollars. A lot of ducks. Thank you. In a row. Shot that. Um, <laughs> I had to say that. Yeah, you wrote that. I had to say night. that. You wrote that last night. That was good. <laughs> but you know, health, wow, that's health, a that's a massive just, just health to, in general. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you have any kids with asthma issues, oh, of course, of course. Like, I, 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 I don't want to make light of it. I'd be, all it'd be interesting but... if we, if the town, whatever, I would like to see how, how bad it was. I mean, if, if there was a way to find out when they start doing it, if, they show you those commercials of people who are trying to sell oh, that yeah. service, show you what it can look like. They have the camera that goes in, they must have own cameras. I guess what I heard from somebody that there's like one person in the area that does it only. With goats, <laughs> with ducks. Uh, yes. We do have a quote already. I yeah. don't know if it's one person in the area. But what's the? Do we have the to quote is at thirty-four thousand. Yeah. yeah, but we it don't have to go out for the phases too. If we wanted to spend. Well, that would mean maybe the. So it's thirty-four thousand. We originally broke our mini split project into two parts. 
plus the electrical upgrades. So There's almost three parts. And they approved it as one. Am I remembering that correctly? They want to do it all at once, or no? No, they didn't. Approve. No, what did we submit though? I don't have it. No, on. as the capital improvement, they did put it through to the finance committee. Right. Okay. But right. that was based on what we submitted, and I can't remember the what the. Um, I'm going to look it up right now. Okay. The number of rooms that we submitted <clears throat> for. Is it is having these ducts as they are now reducing the efficiency of the mini split system in any capacity? Like, is it are we paying more for the mini splits because the ducts are so, so clogged? Or? The one so. The, the way we've approached it in other buildings is in people, there's, you can have, there's different ways of skin, the, whatever the cat is, right? Um, <laughs> sorry, you can yeah, 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 right. the deer in the rock, right, whatever. Right, right, right. It's way, it's going to deer. Um, so we pushed forward because of the rebates with Eversource in the idea of let's get the cool air conditioning in the classrooms. Right. That we first put the putting the AC into the classrooms, and then we're working on getting the building management system to hook up to the AC units and the other heating. Provide however the room is. Many of the times unit events. Right now, technically, yes, you could have the heater on in the room and the AC on at the same time. Because because they're not going to be connected. That's another hundred thousand dollars, depending on the size of the building. Yeah, it's so, like a thousand dollars per unit. I think. And so, right now, yeah, like in Deerfield, um, the Green Energy Committee there is trying to get a grant to upgrade a VMS system to get everything wired so the two are talking to each other, so you are not running two systems at the same time. Right now, it's done manually. I mean, basically. Um, um, depending on the building, the control of the mini split is not always the classroom teacher's control, depending on, okay. depending on what building. The same kind of thing is happening at Frontier, that third floor gets, you know, on a 75 degree day, it's 85 degrees in this classroom. So we put the AC units in. Technically, they can be on at the same time. We took all the remotes away because <laughs> high school kids do, you know, and, you know, they're controlled by one person and they go through, you know, daily and check that. So should they all be on the same thing? And should you do it all at once? Yeah, that makes complete sense. But we don't have enough money. We're trying to do step by step along the way, and we're trying to find free ways of doing it. Because green communities, you know, it's energy efficiency, not just because you can't have them on both at the same time. Mm -hmm. But um, it's better control systems. All our control systems are out of date. We don't have the ability to, you know, open up our cell phone and check the whole building. Right. Okay. I mean, it can be a frontier at a basketball game, and it's eighty-five degrees in there because the control system is, 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 on, is on the fritz again, um, which I haven't also called. <laughs> I'll see that we get that to have no season. Um, so we but, broke it down into two phases, six rooms a phase, and this year we asked for the first phase, so sixty thousand, because it's about ten thousand per unit or per room. And then we asked for fifty-four thousand to do the power upgrade because the electrical upgrade has to be done in order to do the full project. So we asked for one hundred and fourteen thousand, of which you get about. There are rebates, um, no rebate on the electrical, but right, the, but the town rebate would get back on the potentially on the thirty thousand dollars if we could get fifty percent on the units. So you know, it's fifty percent off each room. You know, that's why we were pushing it to, you know, it's, and also the, you know, so every source uses vendors and they're like, hey, it's not going to be around forever. And they've been saying that for the last couple of years, but eventually it's going to stop, yeah. you know, um, but. Um, and then the $30,000. Well, it, well, exactly what we've done, I mean, in, what we've done in other towns. So deer, what Deerfield did is they said, um, here, right, yeah, I'm going to make some stuff here, but they gave us, go. You get thirty thousand. Roll it right back and do three more yes. classes. Yeah. Oh, then you did those. Oh, now you do three more classes. You have fifteen thousand dollars because you can rebate right. those rebates. You get what I mean? And oh, roll that back in. And so they were very flexible with us about that money can roll back in. It gets a little. You have to work closer with the town because the money goes back to the town and that kind of stuff. Um, How quickly did those rebates come back? It takes a while. It depends on the project. They uh, have been both. quicker. Um, when Jamrock has done the paperwork, they've been quicker. But if we go through our source, it takes a lot longer. So we lose one. We had to wait almost a year. Yeah. And mm -hmm. was... But we did the Deerfields last summer. We already received the rebate this year. That was they got back like forty thousand dollars. And Deerfield has an under town warrant to do the the, other, the rest of it. At set, they put seventy two thousand dollars under town warrant to under their capital to do that. Conway is just about complete. 
and some of them just started. But if they're talking about, and I didn't watch the meeting, but Bill mentioned using possibly if the town has it, ARPA money to do the duct work project, oh, okay. could I mean, we still request the other things under the capital committee and couldn't they be done essentially back to back? Or is this really about building management system not connecting and the duct work is just sort of a delay in the process? There was conversations from people on the committee that, you know, um, worried about spending more money on energy and, you know, coming in here in the summer and they, it was cold in here and it didn't have to be that cold, you know, that kind of thing. And nobody was this room here. actually does. Because this, this room has a yeah. No, it's, it's got the server. Oh, right, right. So well, and there's a, a humidity yeah, control good. component yeah. with that too. Yeah. And so it was so it's it's very on important the news, right. right, a couple of years ago and they had mold in the building and everything. Maybe that was that crazy year. We had the same, that's why Conway really pushed too, because that was the year they had a lot of mildew. We didn't get full mold. But, yeah, you, you know, hear those carpet books. Right. So we have that here. Yeah. But, you know, it, if it's not consent, it's not toward a management system, then you have to have somebody responsible walking around. You know what I mean? And old schools, you know, shut the windows at night. But, but the management systems cost a lot of money. Right, it costs about a thousand dollars for Frontier. It was a thousand dollars per room moving, you know, in it. Well, there's a lot of rooms, so you know, it's you know, it adds up. But the 54,000 for the electrical upgrade is that only for the six mini splits that we're going to go in, or is that an no, upgrade that for would every? Get, yeah, that would get where so that's to that's the good that the 54 is going to take care of all the future okay. ones. Yeah. That we're gonna that we could possibly do. But are they gonna consider funding that this year? And then we could ask for the mini splits again next year. Because without the power upgrade, we can't right can't do anything without the electrical being right. updated. Well, it sounds like they're asking for another meeting and they're asking to build a go. And when's yeah, did you look up the next meeting you said? I didn't it's oh. in May. I didn't I don't know okay. the date. That's all right. I can let you know. Yeah. Please. Um, anything else? No, thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? All right.